If you want to start a YouTube channel but don't want to spend 10 to 15 hours of your day editing a single YouTube video, then this is the easiest way for you to actually do that. Look, I get it. Premiere Pro is a really hard application to learn. You have to spend so much of your own time to learn what the tools are, how to use the program properly, and you can definitely be spending that time elsewhere doing something else. Whether that be planning more YouTube videos, working with clients that you need to attend to, and more importantly, focusing your energy on other social media platforms when growing your personal brand. Video editing takes up a huge amount of your time, but at the same time, you don't want to upload half-assed videos onto YouTube and have the world see what you have to offer. And the reason behind this is because if you upload a half-assed video, then this basically ruins your personal brand image. So in this video, I'm going to quickly show you how you can easily edit a YouTube video in just under three hours. So before we begin, in Premiere Pro, we have to set the parameters when editing in a sequence. So to quickly do this, you can just follow my settings right here. I want to set the video to 1080p for the resolution and the FPS to 30. And this is the only parameters you really have to only care about, but it really does depend on what your filming equipment is. For example, if your camera is shooting in 4K, you would have to change the resolution to 4K. But if you're shooting in 60 FPS, then you would have to change these parameters for the FPS from 30 to 60 instead. But essentially, these are the only two settings that you would have to change in this tab if you want to make a great YouTube video just really quickly. If you want, you can even save the sequence settings as a preset so the next time you do make another YouTube video all you gotta do is just load up that same preset just by clicking this button right here and just easily edit a video like that. Now I'm just gonna assume that you have already recorded your video and have uploaded to your computer. So what you can do is that you can easily drag it into the assets folder right here so your video pops up like this. Now after doing that you want to drag that file into the timeline right here which is your sequence that you just recently created. Now depending on how you recorded your video whether that be chopping up in small clips or recording as one long entire video exactly what I'm actually doing right here because I'm making so many different takes of this video you might have to chop up the video just a little bit so you can remove all that white dead space. The reason why you want to remove all of this empty space is because it just creates a lot of awkward silence and it doesn't look really professional and up to the standards of what you YouTube videos are like nowadays. So to quickly cut all of this white space out, you do have to do this manually. There isn't really any automated way you can do this, but I can guarantee you, you only have to spend at least 30 minutes of your time just editing this small piece out. So to begin cutting out the dead white space, you have to click C on your keyboard. So after clicking C, you have to click at the beginning of the white dead space and at the end of the dead white space. Now after that, you have just created a new artificial clip in between the clips that you just implemented. And after that, you can just highlight the white dead space and just delete it with the delete button on your keyboard. So after doing that, you have to manually do this throughout the entire video and just cut out all the dead space and just put all the clips all together so it looks like one entire video. Now this is a very basic way of stitching clips together and video editing but this saves you a significant amount of time and especially since you are a very busy person and you don't want to spend any more time editing a YouTube video. Now what I recommend you doing for the next 30 minutes is perfecting the first 30 seconds of the video and the reason I say this is because the first 30 seconds of a video is the most important part of a YouTube video. This is where your audience gets hooked on, they stick around to watch and most likely actually book a call or even comment on the video that you're trying to create. The reason why you need to put so much focus on the first 30 seconds is because that determines if your audience sticks throughout the video and if YouTube will continue promoting that video to a wider audience. So this would mean that you have to include some text, images, or some b-roll footage in the beginning of the video so your viewers are more likely to stick throughout the first 30 seconds. So to make it very quick and easy for you to attract your users in the first 30 seconds, I would recommend putting a lot of text subtitles in the beginning. Now to make some really simple text that you can do, you can simply click T on your keyboard just like this and type what Ever subtitle that you want or any text that is related to what you're explaining in the YouTube video. After doing that, you want to go to this tab here where you can see all the graphics. By clicking on graphics, you would be able to change a lot of the settings when it comes to the subtitles and the way it is designed. But for a very basic and eye-capturing experience, you should turn on the strokes button, which is right here, and then set the white to black. So turning on strokes helps give a lot of contrast to your subtitles and makes it easier for your viewers to read what is happening on your screen. And if you want to change the font style to something very specific to your own brand or something a little bit more obvious you can go right here to change it to your font style. Now if you want to emphasize a specific word or highlight a word in a different color what you should do 
is that you should highlight the text that you want to change. Then you have to go back to the graphics tool right here and then click fill to change the color from white to any of the other colors that you prefer. Now to make the first 30 seconds a lot more enjoyable, you should have some animations with your text. So to quickly make a really simple animation, you can have the text easily just transition into the screen just something like this that I'm showing right now. So what you want to do is that you want to expand the vector motions tab right here and create a key point for the position tool by clicking the stopwatch icon. Now what you want to do is to move the text off of the screen by moving this tab right here, just scrolling it down until the text is not visible on the screen anymore. Now what you want to do is to create another key point at a different time. So how you can do this is by moving your mouse over here and just clicking a few seconds ahead or you can also use the arrow keys. And at this new point, you want to create a new keyframe and then have the positioning of that text move back into the screen so that there is an animation that is being played. And if this is your first time creating an animation like this in Premiere Pro, congratulations! This is probably the easiest way to make an animation. Now this animation is really simple and it can be applied to a lot of different assets whether it be it under a subtitle, images, and even b-roll. Now if you want to include images and b-roll footage alongside your text, you can use a website like Pexel which is completely free to use. And all you gotta do is find an image or video that relates closely to what you're saying in the video and just download it. You then can put that downloaded file into the assets folder on Premiere Pro and then drag it onto the timeline that you just created. Similar to the text as I just mentioned, you can open the vectors motion tab and then change how the positioning, the scale, and the rotation of that asset would be like. Be as creative as you want with the animations, but if you want to keep it really simple, just do the exact same process that I just mentioned when it comes to editing an animation for the text. Now all you have to do throughout the rest of this video is include a lot of animated text, images, and b-roll footage shown throughout the video. But to make the process even easier for you to just handle and edit really quickly, you should definitely be using a lot of text, images, and bureau footage whenever you say something very important for the audience to understand. Now the reason behind this is because if you were to include an animated sequence at that point, your audience would have a better understanding of what you're trying to say. Great, so you have gotten to this point and your video is starting to look something like this with some basic animations, with some text flying around, images popping up, and b-roll footage throughout the video, for example. So what you should be doing right now is adding some background music to make it a lot more enjoyable for the audience to watch. Now, if you don't want to waste too much of your own time finding a free-to-use music online, you can easily go on YouTube and search up a music genre of any of your choice. For this example, I'm just going to do lo-fi, and at the end of that title, you can just add the words free to download. Now, if you look at all the YouTube searches here, you actually have an endless supply of YouTube YouTube songs or free to use music that you can use for your own YouTube videos. Now if the music that you clicked on does not have a download link or anywhere to uh, just download the file, you can kind of sketchily just go on Google and search up uh, YouTube to MP3 and just put the URL of that video into the download link here. It's okay to do this. I haven't run into any problems doing it. I've been doing it for like the past 7 to 8 years. Hopefully I don't really expose myself, but this is a completely free way of doing it. If the video does say free to download then this is completely fine for you. You then want to drag it into Premiere Pro and then put it at the beginning of your timeline. Now if your music is not long enough and it does not stretch till the end of the video which is pretty much most of the cases when it comes to making a YouTube video, there's actually a tool on Premiere Pro where you can easily extend the music till the end of the video. And the best thing about this tool is that it uses AI to match the music to where the cuts would actually be happening. Now to extend it you should be looking at your toolbar right here. So when you find this tool that looks like a line with some arrows on the side you want to hold down control on your keyboard which is for macbook if it's for pc you want to hold down alt and just click on the tool right here until you see the music tab. Now this music note looking tool is actually called a mixer tool. So what the remix tool is, is that it's an AI tool that helps you stretch out or shorten the music into the proper length that you so desire. So what you want to do right now is to click on this tool and move your mouse over to your music. You then want to click on the music that you want to extend and just drag it out till the end of the video. After doing that and just releasing the mouse, you then would have to let the AI to do its thing. Now what you will see after using the mixer tool is a lot of white squiggly lines throughout the music. Now to quickly explain what these lines are, these lines are actually where the AI believes is the best place to stitch the music together to help it extend all the way to the end of the video. So in a way, it makes the music flow a lot better and does not make it sound choppy at all. So when you listen to the music as you're watching your video, it sounds a lot more fluid and a lot less robotic. And personally, I think it works really, really well. After adjusting the length of your music to fit your video, you can go up all the way here in this window and change the audible decibels to something a little bit lower because your music might be a little too loud. 
about. So a good rule of thumb is that if the music isn't really overpowering or covering what you're trying to say in the video, then this is a good decibel level you should be having your music set at. So now after completing all those steps, you want to begin rendering your video. So on your timeline, you want to drag your mouse to the beginning of your video and click the letter I on your keyboard and then drag your mouse all the way to the end of your video and just click O. After doing that, you want to go to the top of your Premiere Pro and find the tab sequence and then you want to hit render in and out. And this begins the process of rendering your video. After the rendering is complete, your video should start looking like this with a green bar at the top. So what you can do after this is to click on the export tab, which can be found at the top right here. And there are some settings that you have to change to ensure your video exports at the highest possible quality. So what you want to do is that you want to click on the presets tab and click on YouTube 1080p full HD. If you can't find this option, then you have to go scroll the way down to more presets and then search up the exact same words that I just said in this video until you find the YouTube 1080p a full HD preset. So now, once you have selected this preset, there are only three buttons that you have to click and change a little bit. Once you expand the video tab and click on the button called more, you want to select render and maximum depth and use maximum render quality. And this ensures that your video exports at the highest possible quality level. Then you want to scroll all the way down to bitrate and change the encoding to CBR. After doing that, you want to set the bitrate between 8 to 10. Now, finally, after doing all of that, you can change the location where your video would be exported to, and you can finally hit the export button. And that's basically all you have to know when it comes to editing a really high quality YouTube video in just a few hours. The process is really simple, and it shouldn't really be taking you 10 plus hours. And I guarantee you, if you follow all the steps that I just showed you in this video, you can edit a video really, really quickly, maybe even less than three hours. Now, this process can be easily automated with a lot of different presets and AI tools but I just wanted to make this video to help a lot of beginner editors or beginner content creators on what's the best way to start making videos on YouTube and shorten the amount of time spent editing. because to be honest even editing this video right here it does take quite a lot of time and I could definitely be using it for something else so if you found this video really helpful why don't you like it comment on it and even subscribe to my YouTube channel so you stay updated on when I next upload and other than that why don't you just take everything that I just mentioned in this YouTube video and apply it to your own YouTube channel and go kill it on YouTube.